Number one, if we're going to reap the harvest that God has and the victory, number one, we have to get a vision, a vision from God. And, uh, and it's very important because, you know, in 2024, in the beginning of the year, I, in our, we have a lot of family groups. How many go to a, a family group? Let, let me see your hand. Let me family group. Okay, let me see your hand. Okay, okay. All right. And how many go to a family How many don't go to a family group? Let me see your hand. Okay. Okay. But you saw them not raise their hand. You make sure you get them to your family group. Right, man? So, but we were, we were, uh, we have family groups every week. It's groups we're like Bible studies, basically, like little churches and homes. And in the beginning of the year, I saw all, the, all these people with vision boards. And I got so excited. This, like, all these pictures of vision boards. I got a vision, a vision, vision, vision. And I love that because without a vision, there's no boundaries in your life. And if you have, you don't have a vision, you, you never, you never have a target. You never, you don't, you don't know if you arrive somewhere. So you have to have a vision for harvest. And so, what is your vision for harvest in 2024? What does that look like? Does that look like that lady I was sitting next to, her son getting saved? Does that look like you getting married? Does that look like you losing the weight? Does that look like you starting a company? Does that look like you getting promoted at your job? Does that look like you multiplying leaders? Does that look like your marriage getting better? What does that vision look like for your life? Because you got to get it, and you got to get it from God, and you got to get it clear. And once you have a vision, uh, then you want to be able to stare at it all the time and see it and believe God and decree over that thing. But a vision is not enough. You, and here I, I wrote, get a vision and a strategy. Because a lot of people I've known throughout the years, I've been serving God over 30 years now, they have a vision, they get excited about it, they're all fired up, but they have no strategy. So they have a vision, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get buffed, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to be the best me, and then comes you know February, March, and nothing's changed. Well, because many times they had a vision, but there was no strategy. So I'm going to ask the room to settle, ushers to settle, leaders to settle. Not, not a lot of moving around. If you have to go, go now because people need to hear the word and you can become a distraction. Okay? So if you want to go, I love you, but go now because I need your seat. Somebody needs your seat. Amen. You know, because we can't let the devil take over the service like that. Come on. You got to be mature. You got to sit there and you got to receive. Come on. Especially ushers. Ushers, settle the room. Leaders, settle the room. So we got to get a vision and we have to have a strategy. Now, that's where a lot of people don't want to pay the price. They don't want to go before God and get a strategy. But God never gives a vision without a strategy. When God gives a vision, he gives a strategy. Noah, here's a vision for a boat. Then this is how you're going to build it. Tell him exactly how to build it. Noah, this is what you're going to do. Moses, I need you to build me a tabernacle. This is exactly how you're going to do it. Joseph, there's a famine coming. There's a vision for increase and promotion in a famine. But this is how you're going to save, and this is how you're going to save the people. So God doesn't just give vision. He gives a strategy. So if you say, I have a vision from God, the next thing I'm going to ask you is, what's your strategy? What's your strategy? How are you going to get it done? Because you've got to have a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, I don't care how much the vision is from God, it's not going to happen. You gotta have a vision and you gotta write it down. You gotta make it plain so somebody can read and read it and run with it. So you gotta have a strategy. Number two, work the plan. Once you have that strategy, work the plan with all your heart and might as unto the Lord. And because if you don't work it as unto the Lord, eventually you'll get tired. So when you're, when you're believing God for a great marriage, do it as unto the Lord. Because sometimes you could look at your spouse and your spouse will discourage you. And you forget this vision. This guy's an idiot. Come on now. Don't look to your spouse, all right? I ain't trying, but don't do it for him in the sense of for him. Do it as unto the Lord. Don't do it as unto her. Do it as unto the Lord. Raise your children as unto the Lord. If you're going to go to college, go to college as unto the Lord. If you're going to start a business, do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you want to do, do it as unto the Lord because everyone else can discourage you. Everyone else can let you down. But if you do it as unto the Lord, you'll never be let down because the Lord will never let you down. All right? And you got to work hard. You got to work hard. Now, uh, working hard is not the answer. I see a lot of people say, man, hard work is the answer. Like I see fighters all the time. They say, I put the work in and they get the mic. If you just work hard, no, no. Because they had a vision, they had a strategy, and they worked a specific plan hard. And that's why they're champions. So you got to put the work in, but you got to do it in a specific way. You don't want to just run around, run around, working, 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 burning yourself out, and you have no results. No, you got to have a vision, you got to have a strategy, and you got to work that plan. Somebody say amen. Number three, number three. Without giving, write this down, there is no reaping. So you got to be a giver. And this, if you're not going to be a giver, you're not going to be a reaper. You know, if, if God can't trust you to give financially, then God can't trust you with more, period. Be a tither. Start with tithing. There's many ways you can give. I give many ways, but, and I want to do a teaching on that one day. I don't know if you can handle it, but maybe I'll, can, I'll teach you this. But there's many ways to give. The first thing is you give tithe to the Lord. 
and that's off the top. And some of you are going to struggle with that uh, because you're living above your means right now. You're, you're strapped financially. Uh, you don't make enough where it ends meet. So you have to look, really look at your life. I was listening to a guy named Dave Ramsey, I think, and he says when he was working with these people to, to get them out of debt, first thing he's going to start cutting up their credit cards, and they're like manifesting. And then one guy had like a Tahoe. He goes, I'm going to have to you know, do surgery for, for, uh, for, uh, in your life. So surgery, good guy, we're going to cut the Tahoe off because you couldn't afford it. See, and a lot of people, they got the nice car, they got the clothes, they got but everything's, they got, they're over their head and they're not tithing. And God can't trust that. So you got to live, you can't live above your means. You got to drive what you can afford. You got to wear what you can afford. You got to live where you can afford and tithe. Come on, somebody, because it's God's blessing that'll take you over the top. Most marriage problems are financial problems right now. So most marriage problems are financial problems. We've got to fix this issue because God can't give you more if you're not managing it. And a lot of people can make more, but they'll still have less because they don't know how to spend right. They don't know how to manage their money. So you've got to learn how to manage your finance. You've got to learn how to give, give, give to your tithe, give to the poor. And as you prosper, then you, then you could do things like give to the poor. Then you could do things like give to, to, like me, I have certain men of God I give, ministries I give to. Then you, you give, there's big building projects. You can be a big giver in that. That's what God has for you. But you got to manage your money. you got to start tithing and you got to manage your money and not live above your means. I know you might not want to hear this, but this is how you're going to reap your harvest. Amen. No, no use in shouting. If we, if we don't own the building, we shout. Come on now. In. I want to shout on the aisle, but I want to own the aisle. Yeah. See, now we're shouting in a building we own. So I know what I'm talking about. We own this building. We own the next building. We own the next building. We own the gas station. We own the other one. We own the apartments. And we own 16 other houses. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking out of my neck. I could teach you how to be an owner, but you got to do it right. You got to honor God. And number four, this is huge. If you're going to reap a harvest this year, and I'm going to reap a harvest, we have to maintain a strong spirit of faith while waiting on God's perfect timing. And so a lot of people lose their faith when they're waiting. But Abraham got stronger while he waited. The Bible says, how many, how many uh, of you like women like candles? Candles? All right. I like candles. I'm not a woman, but I like candles. Come on. I think I learned them when I started praying, praying. Okay, so, but a candle, you burn it, and the wax kind of peels over, and it gets stronger and stronger like the base of that candle. Well, that's what Ab Abraham, he got, the longer it took, year after year, he didn't get weaker in faith. He got stronger in faith. And so the longer it takes, you, you don't want to get weaker you're believing God for your harvest. You're believing God for your spouse. You're believing God to get married. You're believing God for your leadership. You're believing God. Don't get weaker in faith. Get stronger as you wait. Get stronger. Praise God. Build your faith up. Maintain a strong spirit while you're waiting on God's perfect timing. Because if not, you're going to wait and the devil's going to say it's never going to happen. Look this, look that. And you're going to end up getting discouraged and quit. And so many people quit right before the breakthrough comes. Because what I've realized is many times before some of your best and greatest breakthroughs come, comes the greatest warfare. And if you're not ready for it, the enemy could take that word out of your life and you end up getting discouraged and offended at God and offended at the church and offended at other people and your blessing was right around the corner. So make sure you maintain a strong spirit of faith while you're waiting on God's perfect timing. And God has a perfect timing. Huck, Mike, how long were you single? A long time, three years, four, five, eight, since you got saved. Okay, like... Like, my, like you were like me, eight years. I never knew who Mike was going to marry. But then he married this beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you would have waited 20 more years, brother. Come on, somebody. When Mike first brought her, I was like, you go, brother. Come on, somebody. I ain't hating. I'm celebrating. Hey, man, somebody. If some of you don't know how to celebrate, though, yeah, you're single. You're like, I can't believe I didn't get married. What's wrong? You stop tripping. I mean, really, like, you know, yeah. So, so, so many people here, you just, you gotta, we gotta wait on God's timing, but what was God doing in Mike while he was waiting? You know? What was God doing in, 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 you, in your spouse when, when you were waiting? Well, God was doing something. So while you're waiting, God's doing something in your heart. In your heart. In your heart. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that came out in your heart. It's in your heart. Mi amor. Come on now. God's doing something in the heart. And so if, if God just gives you everything right away, but what if God needs to do something in your heart that if he blesses you, what if Mike would have, she's so beautiful and amazing, he could have been tempted to put her before God. But God had him wait, and God was his number one. So when she came, God's still number one in their life. 
They serve, they're here, they're on fire. And that's, that's testimonies. I mean, it's all over this room. Come on, somebody give God praise. And so it's powerful when you're waiting, God's doing something in your heart. And don't despise the day of small beginning. Don't despise that day of, of that season while you're waiting. God is going to come through. God's on his way, but he's doing something in your heart like Joseph. Remember, the word of the Lord tested Joseph. And at the right time, God promoted him. And when the promotion and harvest came, nobody could stop it. No enemy, no jail, no, jail, no false accusation, no hater. Come on, somebody. Powerful. All right. I got to hurry up because I got to get to today's point, but this is good. This is, I want to keep going through this because I got to, you got to understand what we're trying to accomplish here. So number five, this is heavy. Maintain devotion. God has to mean more to us than everything. And whatever harvest you're believing God for, you're going to get tested in that area. You're going to get tested in that because God wants to know, do you love what I'm going to give you more than you love me? Do you love the career more than me? That's what he told Peter. Remember, he's like, remember, he goes, it was his business. And God said, you love that more than me. Because he was calling him into ministry. It was a test. And he didn't. And he had to, and he had to, he got to get that right. So when I, like, 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 it's, it's powerful because I see people, you know, you, you put your husband before God, dangerous. You put your wife before God, dangerous. You put your children, some of you get little children, and, and now all of a sudden, it's like they're, listen, your kids are like every other kid. Oh, no, my kid's special. Yes, they are, but nothing. No, they're not. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my kid. Like, your kid's a kid. I know I'm hurting your feelings, but it's the truth. Oh, no, he's special. Only Jesus was special. Come on, somebody. <laughs> your, your kid is crazy like every other kid. You don't discipline your kid. He'll run wild like every other kid. Some people can't even correct you about your kid. Oh, you know, little Johnny's tripping. Oh, don't tell me about no Johnny. Like, oh, my Lord, look at this. I, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Vampire mama. Come on, somebody. Like, oh, Lord. Fangs, come on. <sighs> oh, God, help us, Lord. I'm just teaching right now. All right. Amen. You don't put your, like some of you guys, you're going to college and it's good and you're getting your degree and you're doing your finals and, you know, spending all your money <laughs> that you don't have. <laughs> I'm just kind of shouldn't laugh. That's so wrong, huh? It's just, I am believe in college, but man, you got to be wise. You got to hear from God what college to go to because some people are wasting money and time on educating in an area they're never going to use. So you go to college, but you make sure you're led by God and God sent you there. And if you're going to go into debt to go to school... You know that God's guiding you to do that, and he's going he's gonna to justify everything in the end. Don't just follow other people. You follow the Holy Spirit. But you can't put your education before God. You can't put your career before God. You can't put your business before God. You can't put your money before God. You can't even put yourself before God. God comes before you and me. That's why the Bible said, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. It's not always easy. So sometimes we say, oh, yes, you can have my family, God, and you, my children, and my business, but not me. No, God wants you too. And you're the hardest one to give. You know that's true. No, Pastor, God has everything. Really? Okay, we'll see. Fast for three days. Let's see who's in charge. Exactly. The devil come up. <sighs> Who do you think you are? Your flesh will rebuke you. Eat that right now. No, shut up. Who's in charge? I'm in charge. You're like, what's wrong with this person? <laughs> yeah, it's true. So... God's number one, amen, devotion. He got, he's everything, and we're growing in this, but we need to, we need to get this right. Because if you don't get this right, you could give, you could serve, you could do all that, but it's not going to work because God knows you'll sell out. If he really blessed you, some of you would disappear. Oh, say, see, somebody, Lord, give me that house, and God gives you a big, beautiful house. Can't even find you no more. It's like a coffin now. I feel bad for a lot of these movie stars. They get these houses and they die in them. And it's like, it's like a, cof a coffin. Be careful what you ask for. Number six, his kingdom must be the number one priority in life. That's building his kingdom. That's heavy. These are things, Pastor, I want my harvest. If you're not going to build God's kingdom, he's not obligated to build yours. If you're not going to build God's house, he's not obligated to build yours. If you're, gonna, if you're not going to help and build God's family, why is he obligated to help and build your family? 
That's why the Bible says you got to seek first the kingdom. You can't, oh, God, bless my business, bless my family, and you don't even build the church. God's not going to bless that mess. you got to get this right. Oh, you don't want to hear me today. Okay, 11 o'clock. I'm coming for you. you got to get this straight. you got to get this right. And you, you can't trick God and make deals with God and all this stuff. No, God knows you're messing around. God knows your heart. God knows what's up. You can, you can hide it from your wife. You can hide it from your husband. You can hide it from everybody. But you can't hide your heart from God. His kingdom must be the number one priority, not just lip service. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm busy. I got to go with this. Remember the guy? He's like, follow me. He's like, I can't. I got to go bury my dad. Nothing wrong with that. But he was testing his heart. He's like, oh, I can't go. I got to go do this field. I got to go over here. I got to go my job. I got to, I got to, I got to. But what about the kingdom of God? What about people going to heaven? What about people being discipled? What about changing nations? What about restoring families? What about God's house? Come on, somebody. That's a secret. And it takes faith. And that brings us to point number seven. And I'm going to close with this in 20 minutes. Come on. All right. How many will give me 20 minutes? Let me see. 20 minutes. Okay. I'm going to take all of it too. I'm going to take, I'm going to take 22 minutes right now. Number seven, write this down. It's trust. No matter what we trust, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what we trust, we remain loyal and committed to God. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. We're going to do a lot, we're going to do a lot of scripture reading here. Blessed. Read with me. Blessed. With spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. For this man will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. How many know heat comes? Economic recession is real. Circumstances of life are real. Negative reports are real. But when the heat comes, you and I will not fear. That means your relationship with fear ends today. Come on. Your unhealthy relationship with anxiety ends today. Come on, clap. Like your relationship with depression and worry and anxiety ends today. Trust. Its leaves will be green and moist and it will not be anxious. Will not be anxious. Say, I will not be anxious, worried, or concerned in any drought. And I will bear fruit. I will not stop bearing fruit. Other people in drought stop bearing fruit. How in the world are you reaping a harvest when everyone else is in the drought? Simple. I trust God, and that trust gives God access and a highway into my world. Ha! I feel something about to break open. Give him a shout like trust. The Greek word is pistis. Psalms 34, 8 and 10. Oh, get, again, let's read this. Say, oh, taste and see. How many have ever went to somewhere you tasted and you're like, whoa, somebody said, hey, you got to try this. And then you tried it and he's like, oh, Lord. I went to a place the other day called the Brazilian Steakhouse. Lord have mercy. I think that was created by the devil himself. You get the little thing and he flip it and it turns red and green. It's like they keep bringing the food and I don't know how to say stop. Finally, Joy's like, stop, Dad. I said, okay, somebody stop me. I'm smoking up in here. Come on, somebody. They keep bringing steak out. This is a tri-tip. And this is, I was like, Lord, have, let me try that. Let me try that. Come on. But I was tasting and seeing that the steakhouse was good. But the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, our God, is a good God. Now, now read with me. Read with me. Say, how blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. How many are blessed in this place because you trust the Lord? Say it out loud. I'm fortunate. I'm prosperous. I'm favored by God. That's you. Now tell somebody that you came with, say, hey, I trust the Lord. And I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. I'm prosperous. I'm favored by God. That's me. That's who I am. That's that, 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 that right there makes people angry. Because people are more talented than you. They know, they, they know, they have more hookups than you. 
They, they, they got more of this and more of that. And everything in the natural says that they, that they should be doing better than you, but yet your family, everything in your life, everything is doing way better because it don't make no sense, of course, because I'm favored. I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. Come on, shout like God is your X factor. He's like, it's like, you know, I, I love the Lakers. You know, Kobe Bryant, I was a big fan. And Kobe Bryant was my guy, right? And, but, you know, Kobe Bryant was a starter. But with God, it's like Kobe Bryant coming off the bench. Like just when you think, man, the bench is coming up, they're going to go down. No, you bring the all-star in. God is the all-star. God is the X factor. God is the championship player off the bench. See, I, I feel like preaching right now, but I'm trying to teach a little bit. Somebody give God a praise like, like God is the X factor in your life. In the New Living Translation, it says even strong young lions. I like that definition. That's, that's what I'm believing God for here. The next generation to be strong and young lions. You know, like young lion, lionesses and lions up in here. Like young, like 19, 20, 25, ready to take over the world. Entrepreneurial spirit, ready to start church. I was just like world shakers history. Come on, young lions. Young lions. Young lions, right? But it says here, even the strong young lions. Sometimes they go, they even go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. See, these could be people who understand market, market shares. They understand rhythms of Wall Street on, and they understand the economy and everything. But even these people will go hungry and drought. But those who trust in the Lord, they'll never go hungry and drought because they're blessed, because they're fortunate, because they're favored by God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, read with me, trust in, trust in, trust in, and rely confidently on the Lord with, I don't know if I'm going to get past this, God, Jesus, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, come on, read with me, and do not, do not, don't do this, do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And if you do this, he will make your path straight and he'll make them smooth. And he will remove obstacles that block your way. That's God going before you. And I read in my Bible that if God is for you, who can be against you? removing every obstacle removing every mountain removing every strategy and trap of the devil this is God going before you and I this is why it's so important that we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding when I was in the recovery home many years ago this is our scripture we used to use we used to call it stop three fiving it brother three fiving it what is that yeah Proverbs 3 5 because brothers would be in the home, and then they're doing good for like a, a, a month. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden, they want to go back home to their family. And we're telling them, brother, you're not ready to go back home. And then the wife's coming. You need to take him. He needs to come to work. I'm like, listen, when he was on drugs, he never worked. He stole all your paycheck, girl. Leave him in this home as long as he needs. But they'd leave, and then they'd always backslide and fail and fall. Because they were leaning on their own understanding. Guys would go, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But they wouldn't even pray on They wouldn't spend time before the Lord. They do their own plans and their own agenda. And how many are in this place or hearing my voice? And you're in a mess today because you're doing your own thing. You haven't submitted your plan to God. You, you made a plan and you said, God, bless my plan. Bless my mess. That's not how it works. That's not trust. you got to say, God, what is your plan? What is your strategy? What is your vision? What is your dream? Oh, you're not hearing me. See, you can't. God's not a slot machine. You're not going to trick God. There's no, there's no easy road. There's no, there's no back door. Some of you are trying to back door. I'm going to go this way. and I'm going to go. You know, you're a thief and a robber. You got to go through the gate. You got to go through the narrow gate. You got to do it right. You got to unpack your trash and come in correct. You can't come playing with games with God. You got to come. Oh, you, ain't, you ain't hearing me. Freedom, I'm trying to get somebody free today. No, you got to commit your plans to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him. Submit and trust those plans to him. And your plans will succeed if you obey his will and guidance. And it reminds me of the story. I, 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 this is a powerful story of the rich man. And it's, I want to I read this. It says in, in uh, uh, 
Bring it up, please. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, And the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful, and he thought within himself. Now he's not, he's not asking the Holy Spirit. This is himself saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he's prospering. He knows, he knows the market. He knows farming. He sowed seed. Now he's prospering. So he said, I will do this. I will put down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. There's nothing wrong with that, but he's not praying about anything. And I will say to my soul, that's what the devil did. He said to himself, I will ascend. I will do this. He's not praying. This is self-dependent. This is self-worship. This is what the Bible calls idolatry. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. So you got a lot of money now. You're doing well. Take your ease, man. Eat, drink, and be merry. Do life. You're, live the good life. But God said to him, you're a fool. You're an idiot. This night your soul will be required. You're going to die. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a car wreck. You're a dead man. And then whose, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Yeah, exactly. That's what this is saying. No, you got to say, God, what, are your, what is your vision? What is your strategy? What is your plan for my life? And you get it and you go after it. If God has a business, like don't go start a business just because your neighbor is starting a business. You may not be called to that business. You may not even be called to business at all. How many people come to our church and our school of business and, and they call, I want to go to school of business. I want to learn a business. And the first six weeks, all we do is basically discourage them from starting a business. You don't have the calling. You, the business will kill your marriage. It will kill your family. You're not called. You don't have the grace for it. But if you have a calling and you have a vision and a strategy, then you do it with all your heart. It won't be easy. It will be tough. You'll have your ups and downs. There'll be battles, but the blessing of God will be with you. If God called you to that education, it won't be easy, but you can get the job done. Whatever God has called you to do, you can get the job done. Maintain a strong spirit of faith. Don't let up. Don't give up. Don't back down. Don't quit because God will bless the work of your hand. I've seen this happen with pastors all the time. They're in the church, and then they want to split it and go start another church. And it never grows bigger than the one they came from. It never explodes. Because that man was never called to be a first. He was called to be a second or a third. But they get in their heart, I want to be the man. I want to be the man. And they never grow. And the people under them never thrive and bloom and blossom. Because God never blessed that work. God never said, this is what I want you to do. They've never been commissioned. They've never been sent. Happens all the time in business, in career, in life. No, we're not going to lean on our own understanding. We're going to rebuke that curse in our lives. We're going to submit to God. Here's my plan. Come on. I'm preaching way better than you'll clap because it's hard to clap when I'm stepping on somebody's toes. But it's important because God loves you enough to tell you the truth. I'm going to go deeper now. You're going to let me go deeper. I got, I got five minutes. This is heavy what I'm going to say next. Commit your plans to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him. Like, look, look, like this, this building we got. So the Lord told me to get it, right? The Holy Spirit spoke, get it, go for it. We, it took a few years, we did. And, but you know what happened? When it, we had three other campuses. We were about to start another one in La Habra. And we still will. But we, were, we bought the, the stage. We bought the sound. We bought everything to start that campus. And then when we were going, I said, I, said, I, I called Pastor Russell. I said, Russ. Come see the building. He came. He looked at everything. He said, Jason, I'm going to give you some advice. So now I'm submitting my plans. I'm saying, this is what I feel. What do you think? Because if I'm going to submit to the Lord, I can't say I'm giving my plan to the Lord, but I'm not willing to submit to authority. So what do you say, man of God? Tell me what you think. you got a bigger church than me. Tell me what you think. He says, what I think you should do is I think you should shut the other campuses down and bring everybody to this campus because it's so big it's going to take everybody to do it. Man, that was the last thing I wanted to hear. That's the last thing I wanted to hear. I'm like, all the work we did and everything, and they want me to bring it all in? No, we could do it. We can do that campus. That would do it all at the same time. But I said, no, no, I'm going to submit to that plan. Thank God I submitted to that plan. Because it, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did. It would have been impossible. But see, I didn't know. But it, oh, no. See, I don't just submit to everybody. I don't submit my, listen, I don't submit my plan to everybody. 
Because people have small thinking, people have agenda, people are jealous, people say they're with you and they're not. So I don't just give my plan to everybody, but I have men of God in my life that I bring my plans to. I have women of God. One of them is your pastor, Pastor Liz. I say, babe, what do you think about this? Because you're going to be in it with me. You're going to be in the fight with me. What do you think about this? What is the Holy Spirit telling you? you got the same Holy Spirit I have. See, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to submit to our spouses. We don't want to submit to our husbands or our wives. We don't want to submit to leadership that we trust. Not everybody, but people that we trust. And you know who I submit to in, in the kingdom of God? People, I look at their lives and I say, I like their marriage. I like that church. I like what they do. And then the Holy Spirit says, that's, one, that's somebody you can come under authority with. And then, I, and then I follow them. And I'm faithful and I'm loyal. And I bring my plan and say, what do you think? I heard the Holy Spirit. I know. I got, I, I got the Holy Spirit. But, but, but I'm a man in authority, but I'm also a man under authority. What do you think? That's part of submitting your plans. Commit your plans to the Lord. Submit and trust them. And your plans will succeed if you obey his will and guidance. God will guide you. And God will lead you. It may not be what you want. It may not, it may not be what you want to hear. I didn't want to hear shut three campuses down. But thank God I did. And now we're opening up our first campus. And now we're going to be able to open up campuses probably every year. Probably two, three a year. Come on, somebody. But I wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't submit my plan to the Lord. Oh, somebody clap. This is powerful today. How many people have gotten a shipwreck in our church and in ministry and all these years? They didn't listen. They didn't listen. They went on ChristianMingle.com, found somebody. Dude was crazy. Come on now. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I met Liz, I, I heard the Holy Ghost. I heard it. I said, Lord. I went home, though, and what did I do? I submitted it to my mom. I said, Mom, I found her. My mom, like, yeah, yeah, you know my mom, like, what do you mean you found her? I found her, Mom. You found her, yeah. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. I found her. My mom's like, okay, all right. And then finally I brought Liz to my mom. I'm submitting. I said, what do you think, Mom? My mom started crying. That's her. I said, I told you. <laughs> what if my mom would have saw her and went, oh, no. No, the, you don't hear the Lord. The devil's a liar, Mom. My mom's a woman of God, a woman of prayer. She prayed me in the kingdom. I trust her. I wouldn't just submit to any mom, because some moms are crazy. Come on, buddy. Uh-oh. All right, all right. Hola. All right. Opa. All right. Should I close now? I'm going I'm to give you a little bit more or no? All right. Let's wrap it up. Psalms 112, 7 through 10. Read this with me. You have, you have somebody you next to you that you love, that you brought? You like them at least? Okay. Are they smiling at least? Okay, tell them this. Tell them, hey, hey, do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to take care of them. All right? They're, say, their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. And in the end, they will look in victory on their enemy. Tell them, in the end, you're going to live in victory over every enemy. No matter what the enemy, you're going to have victory over that enemy. In the New Living Translation, tell your neighbor, they share freely. They give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. See, that's what's happening with the gas station. See, somebody tried to sow a seed into the gas station. And I said, too late, I sowed the first one already. He said, what do you mean? I said, no, 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 because I'm going to get my seed in the ground. I'm going to bless somebody. And because the Bible says your good deeds will be remembered forever. That means my, my, my great, 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 great grandkids are going to be living off a blessing they don't even, they don't even understand. It's because great, 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 great grandpa Jason was helping the poor. Come on. They will have influence. Tell your neighbor you're going to have influence and honor. Real influence. Not, you know, now that everyone's an influencer. They're an influencer, influencer. You know how stressed out most influencers are? Because they, gave, they, they made themselves influencers. They did the work, they, and, they have, and they got themselves to the top, and they have to keep themselves at the top. I don't want to live with that kind of stress. No, if God's going to make me an influencer, no man can bring me down. If God's going to give me honor, no man can bring me down. I ain't living with that kind of burden. I ain't living with that kind of stress. Come on. Uh-uh, some... uh-uh, the devil is a liar. The wicked will see what God does in your life, and they're going to be angered. See, when God blesses you, it's going to make people angry at you. Sorry. 
Some of you want God to bless you. Oh, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. But you don't like when people don't like you. Listen, listen. People, God starts blessing your family. And you see, you are single and now you get married to somebody handsome. All your little girlfriends that were your friends, they're still single and looking at you. And they don't like you no more. Oh, hater aids in here, right? No, no, they get mad. People get mad. You get blessed. You, they don't like it. But, and they're going to gnash, they're going to gnash their teeth. <laughs> Talk about you. Speak against you. Gossip about you. Because they're just jealous of you. But the devil's a liar. It says they're going to melt away in despair and death. The desire of the wicked will perish and come to nothing. That's what happened to Isaac. The Bible said that Isaac sowed in that land. The man began to prosper, continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And the enemies envied him. The Philistines envied him. Why? Because the Philistines did it their way. The Philistines built their wealth their way. They built their business their way. They built their family their way. But here comes Isaac and he built it God's way. And God's way is always better than man's way. I said God's way is always better than man's way. There is a way that seems right to a man. But the end leads to death. But God's way is the highway of breakthrough and the highway of favor and the highway of supernatural harvest. Somebody shout, somebody clap like you're going to build like Isaac built. He began to prosper. He continued prospering and he became very prosperous. And here's the Philistine. The Philistines, he's digging digging a well because he needed water to prosper in that agricultural, that that kind of society. And and, and they they, they start filling the wells with dirt. They're trying to stop him, but they couldn't. Because the Bible says some trust in chariots and some trust in war horses, but we don't trust in those things. No, we remember and trust in the name of the Lord our God. And the Bible says that those who trust in man have bowed and they've fallen. That's what happens when you try to do marriage man's way. They bow and they fail. You try to raise children man's way, it fails. You try to do business man's way, it fails. Anything you do in the flesh will fail. But when you do it God's way, you will rise and you'll stand upright. And when God lifts you, no man can bring you down. When God raises you, no man can cap you when God prospers you no man can take it and if they do God will give it all back and more somebody get on your feet and give God praise like you're trusting in the Lord with all your heart leaning not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path I love the way it says some trust in chariots best chariots of the day they're war horses they trained them but no no The battle belongs to the Lord and the victory comes from God. Daniel, I love it this way. You know, trust says, even if God doesn't come through, I'm not gonna change my position. My position is trust. That's what Daniel told the king. He said, bow down and worship me and I won't throw you in this fire. I won't throw you in this lion's den. And Daniel and the Hebrew boys all had the same confession. Listen, and listen good king. Listen and make, I'm gonna make it myself clear to you. Your majesty, we will never serve or worship your gods. I believe God's gonna come through. I know God's gonna come through. But even if God doesn't come through, I'm not bowing down, I'm not backing down. I'm gonna trust God all the way. But pastor, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does work? Well, pastor, what if it doesn't come through? It doesn't matter. I'm going to trust God. You're never going to accuse me of not trusting God. I'm going to trust God today. I'm going to trust God tomorrow. I'm going to trust God next year. I'm going to trust God with my wife. I'm going to trust God with my health. I'm going to trust God with my children. I'm going to trust God with my finance. I'm going to trust God with his church. Somebody ought to give God praise like you're going to make up in your mind. I'm going to renounce fear. I'm going to reject fear. I'm going to trust in God. And no matter what comes my way, no matter what they say, no matter what enemy comes my way, it doesn't matter matter because if God is on my side and God is breathing in my sail I shall run through troops and I shall leap over all you can trust in your chariot trust in your horse trust in your plan but I got my plan in the most high God I got my strength from the most high God I got strategy from the most high God somebody give God praise like you're trusted all the way throw your hands up throw your hands up and give him a shout of praise like you're trusted all the way it's harvest time an arrogant, look at this, look at this, listen, powerful. An arrogant and greedy man stirs up strife. So if you know somebody who's stirring up strife, understand what's in their heart. They're arrogant and they're greedy. Don't ever listen to somebody who stirs up strife. 
because they could say all the right words but their hearts corrupted with poison they're arrogant I don't care what videos they make I don't care what they say I don't care what they do they're arrogant and they're greedy and they stir up strife but we are not of those who stir up strife but we are those who trust in the Lord we don't need to fight man no I don't need to fight a man listen 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 people come against me it doesn't matter I'm not coming down to their playing field I'm not going to come down to your field because the devil wants me on your level, but I'm on another level. You can talk about me. You can blog about me. You can write about me. You can do whatever you want about. You can take my sermon and edit it up and make it say something I never said. But one thing you can't do, you can't stop my rising. You can't block my miracle. You can't block my harvest because God has given up. No, 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 no. I need somebody to come in agreement like God's lifting you. They're talking about you at your job. They're talking behind your back. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. God is on your side. Trust in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, trust in the Lord. Tell five people, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. High five somebody and tell them, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And tell them if you trust in the Lord. You will be blessed. You will be fortunate. You will prosper. You will be favored by God. Trust in the Lord and keep doing good. And you will live safely in the land and you shall prosper. You shall decree it and it shall come to pass. I decree and declare that we as a church are trusting God. We trusted God at the bluebird. We trusted God on Washington. We trusted God on Imperial Highway. We trusted God on Hadley. And we're going to trust God in the next campus. And we're going to keep trusting God. Somebody give God praise. We're going to sing this song. But don't let it be a song. Let it be your confession that God is a good God. Come on and worship the Lord today. Yeah. Trust it all the way. I see a finish line of blessing. Don't quit before the finish line of harvest. I see a finish line of harvest. And you're running. Don't let the enemy knock you off course. Don't let him offend you. Don't let him knock you. You keep running. You focus. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. And God's going to see you to the finish line. Let's worship one more time all over the house. Your voice. 
voice and worship God in your heavenly language. Some of you haven't worshiped in the spirit in years, but right now something's gonna unlock. Something's gonna unlock. Something is gonna unlock. Something is going to unlock now. Lift your voice like a trumpet and worship in the spirit. All the way, all the way. 